Welcome to Pro Tools Answers, where we discuss and elaborate on questions posted to the Facebook forum and other places, right? So uh, we'll talk about your questions, we'll get them answered, and we'll get you back on the road to creative genius as quickly as we possibly can. Um, Dave is out today, uh, but joining me, as always, is Anders Motz from Tone Craftwork. How are you doing, Anders? I'm doing fine. How are you? Outstanding. I'm so glad. It's hot over here. How is it over there? Ah, well, it's been a really rainy spring uh, this year, unfortunately, but tomorrow, apparently, we're getting some nice weather again. And rain is coming to me tomorrow. So I think what's happening is all the clouds are just going to just overnight just move from Austria to Japan. Austria. Austria. (laughs) (laughs) I'm an American. I don't know geography. Uh, Austria. And it's just going to jump over to Japan and then dump on me. Outstanding. Um, Anders, we had a question on, on, I think it was in the Facebook group, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Um, yeah. That, that was an interesting one that we wanted to, to dig into. Do you have that question handy? Yeah, yeah, sure. It's a question from Shaban, or Shaban. And he says, if I have these two clips and I need to make them permanent without having to commit what will be the easiest way, And of course, he's got this fantastic little screenshot as well, where we can see two of the clips, which he has numbered one and two. And what's interesting here is, of course, that he has clip effects on these two clips. And what he wants to do is here to to render in the clip effects into these clips. And he uh, might not want to use the commit function, which he says, without having to commit. And of course, there is an easy solution. By the way, a lot of answers to this questions. Right. But none of them got the easiest way to do this. So, Andy, what's, what's, the, what's the fastest way to do this? Well, well, first of all, and I don't mean to be a scold, but the word permanent is, is I think sometimes I, it could be an interpreted in a lot of ways. And if I recall the, the thread, some people said you can do time locking or edit yeah. locking and lock it on the timeline. That's, that's one way of permanence, or you can consolidate it and create a mm-hmm. new file. That's a different aspect of, of permanence, but that's not what he was asking, yeah. right? Ultimately, if you read down the, the, the thing, it was that he had had clip effects, which is a fantastic feature. Love it. Um, I use it. I use it multiple times yeah, daily, yeah. like all the time. I use it, um, and I'll show you how I use it. Um, and and um, he's asking, how can I apply my clip effects, which are a real time kind of mm-hmm. thing going on? Uh, how can I apply them permanently, as as if I was applying just you know uh, an audio suite, which is essentially what this is. So yeah, so it's basically a, a matter of rendering that into the clip instead of having them as a real-time effect. That's yeah. right. Now, now, could I consolidate? I could. Yeah. You know, that is a way to, to, to render. And, and, uh, and if, you, if you have clip effects and you do a consolidate, then whatever clip effects you have are applied, that's no problem. No problem yeah. at all. But, um, and could you use the, the consolidate function as well? Yes, that would be sure. an alternative. Yep, absolutely. Yep. Um, and so, but there's, but there's another way, and, and I think there's a way that gives you what you want without taking anything away. And even a little bit more than you actually want. Let's look into this. So I've got this dialogue editing, which I think might just be where clip effects shine the brightest. Fantastic, yeah. It's just so, so useful. And the great thing about clip effects is it allows you to do something to a single clip on your timeline without having to process the entire track. I mean, one of the things that used to drive me absolutely crazy was you would have somebody on a track and maybe there was some sibilance. So they would roll off the high end and it would dull the entire track or they might have some plosives. So they'd roll off the low end and it would just completely take any presence from that track or any power from the low end. What I have here is a, is a dialogue track. It's actually my dialogue track. So I'm not throwing anybody under the bus except for me. Do I have a plosive problem? Guilty. Everyone has, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, I got more than most, okay? I will freely admit that. So what I've got here, you can actually see it right there is a plosive And there's a lot of different ways you can deal with it. But really, to me, the best way to deal with it is to roll off the low end a little bit. But I don't want to roll off the low end of the whole track. I just want to roll off the low end of just this part of the word, just the first part. So what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and tab to transient, hit the B key and break it. And then I'm going to break somewhere in the middle of the word. Just anywhere kind of doesn't matter. It's not a big deal. And I'll just go ahead and hit the B key here. Okay. Then I'll select the clip. And at the bottom, you can see here my clip effects. And 
I happen to have, as preset number one, a fairly aggressive <laughs> low cut, and that's fine because I'm only dealing with it here, right? I also, because I've got this preset, I could hit the one key on my keyboard and do the same thing. And if you see here, if I zoom in a little bit, you can see that it has a little EQ icon over here. Great, fantastic. And then what I'll do, I'll put an equal gain crossfade here, which essentially eases out of that low end cut and the plosive is gone without doing any real damage to the rest of the word. It's a fantastic way to work. Now, I think that Siobhan had actual full clips that he had, yep. but the workflow and the concepts are the same. So let's say that I wanted to permanently apply the changes that I've made here to the clip. I think the popular answer online was consolidate, was it not? Yeah, totally, yeah. Now, when you consolidate an area or a clip, you will apply the clip effects, right? And clip gain as well, for that matter. I could do that by holding down shift option three, right? And I've just now consolidated it. Great, fantastic. Have I made the change? Yes, I have, right? And you can even see that the plosive has gone way down. But there's a problem, right? The problem is obviously uh, you can't do the crossfade the way that you did it before because there will be no extra audio there, right? Right. If I go here and try to make a crossfade, I get this really annoying dialogue box say, hey, guess what, Andy? You're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to crossfade audio where there's no audio data to crossfade and I can either skip it or I can adjust it. And if I adjust it, it's gonna do something like this, which may be okay, but it doesn't really give me the flexibility that I want. Yeah. So here's a different way to do it. And again, Anders, I don't think anybody- No, no, in the thread, there was no one suggesting this, but there is of course uh, an easier solution. I uh, can think uh, of it like this. Avid have probably got the solution ready for you. And so they do in this case, yeah. So what I'm gonna do instead, now I've backed up to where I was and I've got clip effects on, right? Here's a different way to render it. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna right click on the clip and down here in the list, you'll see clip effects and I can bypass my clip effects. I can copy the effects, which is kind of cool. I can clear them, which is basically going to remove all the clip effects. But the one that I want right now is render. And when I render it, boom, this is what's gonna happen. And you say, but Andy, it looks like you did exactly the same thing, except what you've done is you've rendered it in a way that's very similar to an audio suite render with handles. It will render that selected area plus a certain amount before and afterwards so that you can do something like this. Watch this, boom, crossfade, done. If I wanted to do a crossfade here, which is kind of weird, but I could do it. And I can even move that crossfade. I can move that crossfade way down the line. So the amount of padding that I have is clearly substantial. Do you happen to know, Anders, what is that amount of padding? Yeah, it would be automatically adding two seconds at the start and the end of, of this clip. So you'll get two seconds of padding. That's right. So if you do this render instead of a consolidate, then you get the extra benefit of two seconds of buffer in the front of the clip and two seconds of buffer on the end of the clip. Now, if you take a look at the clip name, you can even see that it says, clip effects in the clip name, which is great. It tells you that it's been rendered. Yeah, I was just going to point that out because to me, this is really important because I can clearly see what's happened to this clip. If I only do the consolidate, there will be no visual indication of what's actually happened to this clip. So I think this is great that it adds the clip effects name to it. So can consolidate do it? Yes, consolidate is a way, right? But to be honest, if you don't want to do consolidate, and I think that Siobhan actually said, I don't want to consolidate. No, he says he, he doesn't want to commit, uh, but I think that also counts as consolidate in his world, uh, at least when reading the comments. Yeah, Andy, I think this is the best solution. And by the way, I just want to add something here. If you hold uh, Control Shift K, or if you're on a, on a PC, that would be the Start Shift and K, you open up the keyboard shortcuts, right? And if you search for render, you will find the render clip effects. And it doesn't have a shortcut. If you're repeatedly using this, uh, you could create a shortcut that renders clip effects if this is something that you need in your daily work. It's a brilliant point. By the way, if you don't render your clip effects, are the clip effects still there? Yeah, sure. Sure, in your session, right? The only reason why you would really, in my mind, need to render it is if you wanted to export it to something else or if you wanted to create a standalone file there. Yeah, sure. There's a lot of different workflows. There's some workflows that I'm sure that require that. And you're right. If you wanted to, you could create a new shortcut that automatically does exactly what you want it to do. 
thanks for explaining this, Andy. I think uh, I think this. I mean, this is a, f a fairly fast answer, and there were a lot of alternatives given using commit and balancing to a new track or using uh, uh, yeah all 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 things. But this is the fastest and easiest ways with the most flexibility, and quite possibly our shortest ever. <laughs> Pro Tools Answers Show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if you got something out of this uh, show, uh, please hit the, the like uh, button and also subscribe to our channel. Uh, it's, uh, it certainly helps you and us as well. Uh, you'll probably find out a lot about Pro Tools in this. And if you are uh, interested in following us more, in more in than one way, uh, you can head over to protoolsanswers.com and, uh, and hit the like and subscribe as well over there, and also become a member of our uh, Protoss Answers Inner Circle, where we um, do monthly masterclasses and have a great online community of people right there. So, Brilliant. You said that very well. Well, thank you. Uh, so ev that I think that's all for today, right? Thank you so much, Andy, for explaining this. You bet. And uh, we'll see you next week. And we're out. <laughs>